Dance stop now Move up a little higher Some way or somehow Welcome to Pushing Limits, KPFA's disability radio program. Today we celebrate the life of the actor and playwright Neil Marcus, who passed away in November of 2021 at the age of 67. Born with dystonia, a neurological disorder that causes involuntary muscle contractions and affects speech, Marcus often said, disability is not a brave struggle or courage in the face of adversity. Disability is an art. It's an ingenious way to live. Unlike other people with disabilities who work with a particular campaign or organization to make change, Neil Marcus saw living as an act of activism. Whether taking photos with friends in a public swimming pool or getting folks to take a stroll in his extra wheelchair, Neil sought to invite others to understand his disability. Our interviews today were done by Jacob Lesnar Buxton, and you will sometimes hear his voice as our guests talk about Neil. We begin with Neil's former partner, Petra Cuppers. She is a professor of disability culture at two universities in Michigan. Here's Petra. I'm a disabled dancer. I am uh, someone who was drawn to the movement arts and to be a conscious dancer and improviser since I was quite a young one. I have a mobility and a pain-related disability, so I was not able to gain a professional qualification when I was a young one. So I quite early on moved into a different strand of work and did community performance work. So I created work with usually other disabled people and their allies. And I've been doing that for many, many years now. So I'm creating my own movement forms, you know, like like many disabled people had to do, like Neil had to do, right? We're creating our own movement forms, which are about being together thoughtfully, consciously, all our senses out in the world. And a lot of my work involves being out in nature. I met Neil many years ago. So we were together for nearly seven years. And I met him during the production of the Anaka Project, a show that I co-created with Amy Meredith Cox, Anita Gonzalez and Carrie Sandal two of us who came from uh, Black and African-American culture and two of us who came specifically from disability culture. And we worked together on the kind of connections between these projects. And we're focused on a, a really hard medical case. And we had community performances in many parts of the country. And one of them was in Berkeley. And this is where I met Neil Marcus. And I had read his work before. I had read his poetry before. I loved his poetry. And the first time we met, it was at a party. I walked into the room and <laughs> and, and there was Neil, who is who was a, a stunning human being, a beautiful person. And his eyes were like blue, shining out at me. And I rolled over to him and we just we went onto the floor together and started dancing. We just, we didn't talk after introducing ourselves or so you're Neil, you're Petra. And we started moving together on the floor and it was, yeah, it was very beautiful. So our relationship began in dance. Neil's use to navigating people staring at him in public always, you know, throughout his whole life that he was so, so skilled at making people feel comfortable with him. That was one of his core skills is to invite comfort. So he would just invite people to swim with him. And that usually worked just fine. The way of being in the world is quite similar to my way of being in the world in that we are excited by art life, you know, the connection between art and life. So we did work on pieces, but really in the main, it was about having this artful attention to what it means to be in the world as disabled people. That often means as people who get stared at or people who have a different access to the world around us. So both his, you know, definitely his and also mine, quote, contribution is less about individual pieces and more about a, a general aesthetic approach to being in the world. Having said that, yes, we did work on pieces. So, so he was part of the Anaka project and he and I also created the Salamander project. So Neil, he was 
already at the point at this point when I met him, he was already an elder and he had to exercise more. You know, his, his spasticity was such that he had to, you know, like stretch his body and he didn't like exercise, which, you know, many people feel that way, but he loved performing for the camera. So he had this brilliant idea of getting an underwater camera and he gave that camera to me and we went to the pools in Berkeley and he would be very happy to jump into the water and to exercise, i.e. just being the water, if I made a picture of him while doing so. And we did. And it was absolutely wonderful. And then we invited friends to join us. And then we all made photos of each other underwater. And then we worked with these photos and we figured out that that project had so much juice. It was so exciting because... There were so many things that come out when you're, when you're wafting in the water together, when you're in this interesting, very central play with one another, talking about what it means to be disabled, what it means to be hindered uh, from doing certain kinds of exercises to certain kinds of spaces are not accessible to us. We just floated together and it gave us this freedom to just chat with one another. Okay. So we, we just played with that. And then we also just went under. I mean, what was really exciting was sometimes not chatting, but just going under and at the bottom of our breath, making a photo of ourselves, like in this edge of art and life. It was gorgeous. In the late 80s, Neil connected with Access Theatre in Santa Barbara to create a play to take the world by storm. Based on his writing, Storm Reading premiered as a limited engagement in 1988 and played to audiences throughout the U.S., Canada, and England for the next eight years. It was featured on CBS News and reviewed in Daily Variety. Rod Latham, the director of Storm Reading, shares more about the show's creation. My name is Rod Latham. I live here in Santa Barbara, California. I am a director, producer of theater and concerts and live events, and for 18 years, I was the founder and artistic director of Access Theater, which was a fully accessible theater company based in Santa Barbara. And we toured around the United States and to Canada and England with mostly original productions, including Storm Reading, which was our longest running show for almost seven years, which was based on the writings of Neil Marcus. Neil first heard about us, and then we heard about him. He was on our mailing list for Access Theater's monthly newsletter, and he started writing back to us, and he started sending some of his own writings, which were very intriguing, and eventually we did meet. After reading a lot of his work, and also his brother, Roger, lived here in Santa Barbara at the time, and Roger was an actor, and the idea came to all of us that perhaps we could collaborate and create some kind of a production based on Neil's writings. And that's how I ended up meeting Neil, who came down from Berkeley. The first time I met him was here in Santa Barbara. And then the rest is kind of history. <laughs> and the first audience was a student matinee of high school students from multiple high schools in Santa Barbara. And they were our very first audience, first people to ever see Neil on stage. We held our breath. We didn't have any idea how it was going to be received. And I'm telling you, those high school kids went ape you know what. <laughs> <laughs> they loved it. And they were so enthusiastic about it. And we were like, whoa, that, that was quite a response. So it fueled us into that night, that Friday night to our first public performance, the word of mouth from that afternoon performance filled up the houses for that weekend of storm reading. And we ended up extending it for another week. And we sold most of the run out. It was really all based on word of mouth. And word of mouth in theater is one of the most powerful tools. And people were so affected and impressed and moved by this show that they talked to everybody and their friends came. So then we decided to take it to LA and do kind of like a, a backers audition, if you will, at the Doolittle Theater in Hollywood. We had some celebrity folks host it and we invited kind of the mucky muck of LA and Hollywood and also some, some agencies. And they saw the show 
And the next day the phone rang in my office and I got a call from Main Stage Management, which was a Los Angeles-based artist management company. And they said, Rod, we would like to represent Access Theater and represent Storm Reading and have a tour. And I said, we would absolutely love that. So Main Stage booked us for the next five, five and a half years all over the United States to Vancouver, Canada, to England, up and down the East Coast, the Midwest, the Southwest, the Pacific Northwest, and Southern California. It was an amazing, amazing tour. Another actor in the Storm Reading performances, Katie Voice, reflects on the impact of the play. Hi, this is Katie Voice. I'm a sign language interpreter who's lived on the Central Coast for a while now and a former member of Access Theatre, friend of Neil Marcus, and still inspired by Neil Marcus. Because we were doing these performances just ahead of the passage of the Americans with Disabilities Act and a little beyond. Here it is, 2022. We still do not have full realization of the Americans with Disabilities Act. Look at all these years that have gone by. And I am a believer, as was Neil, that art and theater can do quite a lot because we have legislation in place. But what we need is awareness and motivation and commitment. So that is what this work did. And you saw it happen all over the place with audiences. And I think uh, it's been said before, but it was quite something to see the audience come in the doors, especially the first night. We would usually be there for multiple nights. So the first night you'd see this audience come in and er there were quite a few people who were apprehensive, quite frankly. I'm not quite sure they bought a ticket why they felt when they felt apprehensive, but it was very clear that they felt apprehensive about what they were getting Mm -hmm. themselves into. And then he would roll out on stage, the stage would go dark and then he'd be in his chair and he'd come out and he would begin to speak to the audience. And it, it was just Neil speaking, no me, no Matt. And you could see people thinking, oh, my God, like, how many hours am I going to have to wait for him to get each of these lines out? And then they wove us in. Matt came in a few moments later and began repeating those lines. I came out, began translate or doing those signs, you know, signing those, those, that message in sign language. And by the end of the show, people were just reading it. There was comedy in it. There was, you know, there was not just everything focused on this is an historic moment. Someone who is just so incredibly brave. This we've got to look at him as some, you know, special moment of inspiration. No, it was it was human life. It was taken from his diaries. And I think at the end of the show, people had a great lifting of enjoyment and fun, and seeing all of these different colors as we started with the watercolor background, all of these flavors, all of these colors to the life of any human being, Neil being one of them, came from the community of people who have disabilities and their allies and their family members, sometimes for good, sometimes for bad. But We changed minds. And so these were people that would then reach out and say, I want to be, you know, send me your newsletter. Or I have an idea I would like to develop. Or where do I find your book? And so that's when you feel that there's a pebble that's been tossed and then ripples. And then as those little (laughs) new ripples throw out their own pebbles, change happens. So... He was welcoming. I think sometimes it would be tiring. Neil was a pioneer. Axis Theater was a pioneering company. The whole concept of what Rod Latham put together with the company was a pioneering concept. Rod Latham as an executive director, as the producer, as the theatrical director of these productions, was pioneering. So I am very happy to see now a more welcoming awareness 
and you're seeing Academy Awards being won and you're seeing books and like even the idea of accessible yoga. This is moving forward. This is advancing. But for it to get here the way it is now, we have to have people who forge the way. And I consider Neil to be one of the people who did that. This is KPFA's Pushing Limits, and today we are taking a look at the life of the actor and playwright Neil Marcus, who passed away in November of 2021 at the age of 67. One of the most famous scenes in Storm Reading showcases what happens to some people with speech impairments when they order at a restaurant. Hello, welcome to Burger King. Can I take your order, please? Yeah. Hello? Hello? Hi? Are you all right? Yeah. Oh. Did, did you just order? Yes. Oh, crap. <laughs> no, I, I'm sorry. Uh, don't tell anybody I said that. Um, can we take it again, please? All right. All right? Okay. Okay. Uh-huh. All right. Okay. Uh-huh. All right. Okay. Uh-huh. Okay. uh-huh. You'd like a cheeseburger? Yeah! Yes! He wants a cheeseburger! Thank God he wants a cheeseburger! <laughs> Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Come on. We're on a roll. French fries? No. Coke? No. Apple pie? No. Uh, onion rings? Yeah! That's it, right? Uh, no. Oh. <laughs> and uh-huh. Uh, a vanilla and a vanilla milkshake. <laughs> I got it all right. Is that it, sir? <laughs> Neil also encouraged people to ask questions about his life and work. Although most of the questions he received were thoughtful, in this clip of Storm Reading, Neil shows how he deals with reporters who are ignorant about those with disabilities. We interrupt this show for a live press conference with Mr. Neil Marcus. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Neil Marcus. Mr. Marcus, Bill Daly from the Chicago Tribune. Can you understand Everything I am saying. Yeah. Yes, why are you speaking so slowly? D does your <laughs> mind process my words as fast as I am saying <laughs> them? Faster, Bill. Oh, Mr. Marcus, Mr. Marcus, read a hockey tent. 
from loving times. Hello, Will. Uh, Good to see you. Um, in your article entitled Zen and the Art of Wheelchair Repair, uh -huh. uh, you'll make a comparison between sailboats and theatrical productions. I don't get it. Uh, sailboats and theatrical productions, how are they related? Okay, right. Well, if it's too heavy, it sinks. And if it's too light, it blows over. <laughs> Mr. Marcus, Vince Gardenia from the Florida Enquirer. Mm. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> yes, no. Neil, my paper ran a story on you two days ago mm -hmm. about a young lady who was seen leaving your apartment through the back door mm -hmm. in the wee hours mm -hmm. of the morning. Do you wish to comment, Mr. Marcus? She only wants me for my body. <laughs> Mr. Marcus, Bob Daniels from the Kentucky Racer. Neil, we notice that you're using a voice interpreter. Uh huh. Uh huh. But are there any words that you can say clearly? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Only two, but I seldom get a chance to use them. Garbanzo beans. <laughs> yes, sir. Mr. You're, Marcus. This will be the last question. Pop yes. Vlogs from the news press. Don't you feel you're using disability as a crutch? <laughs> mm -hmm. You don't act like a normal disabled person, like the ones I'm used to seeing. I mean, you, you dance in public, you bring attention to yourself in very unusual ways, and you handcuff yourself to strangers. <laughs> so what is your view on the relationship between the individual, such as yourself, and society? <laughs> Call me Bob. Okay. <laughs> Society does not require you to conform. It only requires that you look like you're conforming. Actually, you're free to do anything you want. Thank you very much. We've got to catch a train. Bye-bye. <laughs>Besides storm reading, Neil also collaborated on several pieces with local dancer Eric Coopers, no relation to Petra Cuppers, who also founded the Integrated Dance Program at Cal State East Bay. Coopers credits Marcus with assisting him in creating that space. So my name's Eric Coopers, and I'm a um, dance and inclusive performance artist and professor at Cal State East Bay. I live in Oakland, which is also traditional territory of the Chochenyo Ohlone people. I'm the co-director of Dandelion Dance Theater and have started and am leading and directing a program in inclusive performance at our university. I have this memory of Neil sitting against the wall on the floor and me coming over and we started a dance and it was just a really electrifying dance for me. I felt like his, our bodies just really connected really well. And um, I loved dancing with him. And I remember going over to his house in Berkeley many times and he would take me out. He had an extra power wheelchair and he would take me around Telegraph Avenue and teach me about what it's like to be in a wheelchair and how to look for the curb cuts and how do you go in and out of 
businesses. And it was really enlightening for me. This was probably around 2002 or three, somewhere around there. Well, I think that he was a real, in my eyes, a real kind of boundary blurrer and bridge maker. You know, he was sort of, to me, a pioneer of inclusive dance, but he wasn't like affiliated with a particular movement or group. He really lived this sense of inclusion and sort of radical humanity and and just brought through his own just showing up and dance spaces and theater spaces and bringing his work. I feel like he changed so much, even though he never, as far as I know, created a nonprofit organization that got all into policy and things like that. His life was his activism and his art was his activism. And he worked on a real one-on-one basis with me, with other, a lot of other artists and was really open to all sorts of collaborations and very generous of spirit. I, I One story I heard about him that I really loved, and I forget who told me this story, was about some either Berkeley town hall meeting or something, some political meeting. And I forget what the topic was. And community members were invited to speak and each community member only got two minutes and Neil stood up or sort of, propped himself up and wanted to talk. And and he had a particular way of talking. He often had to press on a certain part of his throat to get the sound out. And it took a while. And he said something like, I'm here to represent slow talkers. We need more than two minutes to say what we need Mm -hmm. to say. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I really loved that. Um, So I feel like he had this sense of political spectacle in a way and it was very much who he was as an artist rather than writing a letter to the board saying we need more than two minutes he yeah turned it into a performance yeah this is mark ramoser thanks to our guests petra cuppers rob latham katie voice and eric coopers they along with neil remind us that social change doesn't just come by way of protest or by voting Creating a piece of art can also make barriers come down or inspire people to be allies in the disability rights movement. You can see the entire original Storm Reading performance and other videos of Neil Marcus by searching his name on YouTube, N-E-I-L-M-A-R-C-U-S. We have links on our website at pushinglimitsradio.org. Big thanks to our producer, Jacob Lesnar Buxton, who did today's interviews. Sheila Gunn-Cushman, Denny Daughters, Adrian Wabi, and I helped with the production. Thank you to our engineer and the rest of the KPFA staff. Thank you for listening today, and thanks to everyone who gave KPFA your financial support during our recent fund drive. Pushing Limits is produced by a collective of people with disabilities. Contact us by email at pushinglimits, all one word, at kpfa.org. Our website is pushinglimitsradio.org, and we're on Facebook as Pushing Limits Radio. Next week at this time, tune in for Education Today with Kitty Kelly Epstein. KPFA is on social media. Follow us on your favorite platforms for news headlines, live stream events, show info, and more. That's at KPFA 94.1 on Facebook and at KPFA Radio on Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok. KPFA Paid Staff is associated with the Communications Workers of America, CWA, Local 9415. You're listening to 94.1 KPFA, 89.3 KPFB in Berkeley, 88.1 KFCF in Fresno, 97.5 K24 8BR in Santa Cruz, and online at kpfa.org.